Hey guys, um, I haven't posted in a while, so today I decided to make one of those classic long FPV vlogs. No fancy camera angles, no fancy editing, no script, no nothing. Just a chill, productive Sunday. Besides, it's been a while since I made an update to one menu because I've been busy with some projects at work, but today is the day. I decided to finally clean up and implement the keyboard shortcuts, which has been the number one requested feature. It's a bit of a longer vlog, so I left a few coding sections there and you know, we're not gonna push it for time. I'm not gonna chase any silly YouTube retention tactics. Instead, I'm just gonna tell you what I'm doing and how. So we are starting off with a bit of a bike ride through the city. It's finally summer here in Oslo and I've been really excited to take the bike out. And if you want to skip that part, I left time codes in the description. But if you'd like to enjoy Oslo in the summer, let's go for a ride. Lately I've been trying to get off of caffeine. I found that it gives me the jitters and a bit of anxiety. So I started actually having all my drinks decaf and this particular coffee shop actually makes one of the best ice cream coffees that I've tried. Kind of addicted to it, I'll admit. But at the same time, I feel less guilty because it's decaf, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Let's try to dust off this project in Xcode. So as you saw, um, the window manager I'm using, this is the app that I'm actually working on. It's called One Menu for those of you who don't know. And for some time now, I've been trying to implement the keyboard shortcuts, but I made a long break working on this project because I had some projects at work that I needed to complete. But you know, this was the weekend, so I finally decided to give it another go. Um, the last thing that I was kind of stuck on was that I wasn't really sure how to detect the currently focused window and I tried using ChatGPT to kind of give me the solution, but it wasn't really working. I tested it very heavily and there was some problems. It was always kind of detecting the wrong one. So I heard of this new, or maybe new for me, AI called Perplexity, which is kind of similar to ChatGPT, but it's supposedly, you know, searching the web and giving you the references as well. So I asked it the same question. And so I was trying or maybe hoping that it will give me some kind of an alternative way. And yeah, right off the bat, it just gave me this uh, new line that was kind of like looking into the shared workspace that I wasn't using before. So here I spent about 10 to 15 minutes trying to jam that snippet of code into my existing code base and see if it will work or not. 
uh, one of the things that I always get reminded of whenever I fire up Xcode is how awful of a development environment it is. You know, just searching for references is slow. Uh, jumping to a definition requires three clicks. I actually have to use the search function quite a lot to find the function definition in the file. I know that my files are a little longer than they should be, but even so, like, this is probably the worst developer experience that I had so far. And, you know, generally I'm using VS Code or IntelliJ and they're much faster just navigating around the code base. Oh, and by the way, this episode is sponsored by NordPass Business. In my experience working at a software company, when you're working with multiple cloud providers, for example, you're using Google Cloud, but you're also using Amazon or maybe even Cloudflare. When it comes to sharing them securely within the team, it's much, much better to have a password manager than just copy pasting passwords in Slack, for example. As an admin, you can delegate and revoke access much more efficiently. You can set a company wide password password policy, for example, and you can also enforce that the passwords are updated and refreshed. So make sure to check out the link in the description, guys. It's a three month free trial of NordPass business using the coupon code Marco business to give a little bit of context why it's been difficult for me to detect the currently focused window. Uh, initially, I was actually detecting which window to snap to a given position based on the dragging interaction. So the way it actually works in the code is that when I start dragging something, I actually take a snapshot of every window position on the screen. And then I compared that to the previous frame and the one that actually moved, I assume to be the focused window and the one that the user wants to snap. So that was the old implementation, but with the new implementation with the keyboard, I have to know exactly which window is focused right now. I've been trying to figure it out and the solution seems to be that you first find the focused application and then you kind of iterate through the windows and you find one with this magic layer constant of zero, which I still don't understand, but I've tested it since and it seems to be doing the job. So, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I hope that it will work out later when I test it on multiple screens as well. One of the tedious things that I always have to do when I'm developing one menu is that anytime I have a new build, I actually have have to give it accessibility permissions all over again because it's a different executable because otherwise it doesn't work. And in the end, um, after some debugging and testing around, I was able to kind of make it work. So I'll call it a day for that. And the last thing I need to do is actually go back home uh, and test out if it's going to work or not on multiple monitors. And if you look closely into my bag here, maybe you'll notice that I brought the big camera as well. But I was like, nah, I'll just film point of view. And, uh, you know, because this is something that I really enjoy doing. And anytime I have to do the big setup with the big camera and everything, it just takes away from the spontaneous feel. And I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to bother. So I just left it in the bag and I carried it all the way here and back home. So actually on the way here, I wasn't riding the bike with any kind of uh, assist because it's all downhill, but because I'm coming back now, I actually decided to put it in gear <laughs> because it's very hot and I don't want to get like uh, super tired and dehydrated while I'm trying to climb back to where my place is actually. But if you look very closely, this is the exact moment that my um, cap fell off. and. <laughs> It's very annoying because when it gets windy, um, it just doesn't stick to my head, I guess. And I have to pick it up from time to time on the street. On the way home, I made a quick stop to the grocery store and got some fresh bread because I'm going to be making some food when I get back. And uh, yeah, so let's uh, use the cutting machine, which always scares me a little bit. I don't know why. Alright, so in today's episode of The Cooking Show, uh, we're making eggs, as per usual, uh, on this channel. 
but we are doing it with spring onion and uh, yeah, we're gonna add some feta cheese later. So yep, let's do the cooking montage. The tomatoes here in Norway are a little bit hit and miss, like sometimes uh, they don't taste like tomato at all, mostly like cardboard. This one wasn't really that bad, but it's nowhere near like proper tomato, unfortunately. But anyhow, um, after filming this cooking segment, which took a little while, my iPhone battery died, so we are going to be filming the rest of the video with the big boy camera. So let's cut to the new angle. So here I just uh, jumped right into uh, testing one menu on multiple screens and yeah, I was kind of surprised that it actually worked from the first try. Um, maybe there is something to be said about that perplexity thing. Have you guys tried it? I'm not sure if it's generally good, but for me it seems to be doing a really great job at this point. Now the last thing that I had to do is actually produce a working build. And for those of you who are not macOS developers or iOS developers, it's a two part process. So you first create an archive of your application, which creates the app file. And then you have to notarize the app, which is some kind of a verification process for the executable itself that uh, happens on the Apple server. However, something broke with my project or Xcode and it's not able to do it automatically. I mean, it's such a basic feature, but it doesn't really work at all. I guess Apple is just too busy working on the new virtual reality metaverse thing. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful object. I mean, come on, Apple. This is like the most basic function that every developer needs. And it's so frustrating that it doesn't work. However, there is a workaround, which is using a command line tool. I already did it once for the previous release, but I forgot about it. So this time around, I actually decided to create a shell script so that next time I don't really have to, you know, think about it again. So here is the shell script in action. Actually, it's like a two part process. So you first upload your executable and then Apple will give you like a request ID that you can use to poll for the result of the notarization. But I just added like a 60 second sleep and it seems to be long enough to complete the process. So I don't really poll anything in my shell script. And finally, uh, to actually release the new app, I had to go back and revive the auto update API that I made a while back and I added the new build with the new file and the new git commit hash. And for that, I had an issue with Firebase because I'm using Firebase functions to deploy the API. And, uh, you know, my billing actually, my I think my billing information expired, but I was getting like a super confusing error uh, trying to deploy the latest version of my function. And I wasn't really able to figure it out. And the only thing that worked was like completely resetting my billing, but it took me forever to figure it out anyway. But after a while, um, I finally managed to deploy the new uh, version of the Firebase function, which uh, handles the app updates. And yeah, so here is the app auto updating itself. It's downloading the zip archive, replacing itself with a new version and cleaning up afterwards. So if you're watching this video, it's very likely that the app has already been updated behind the scenes if you have the automatic updates uh, function enabled. So, you know, to try it out, I'm just going to put up the keyboard shortcuts on the screen and you guys let me know in the comments if it's working for you or if there's any bugs. And yeah, just let me know uh, what the next feature should be. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog and uh, make sure to hit the like and subscribe.